What's good YouTube? Warstorm here coming at you guys in another video. Today I'll be talking about brick cards. This is a discussion that kind of came up because I was watching um, a little, little while ago, I was watching Farfa uploaded an interview with, I believe it was Patrick Hoban, where he mentioned something kind of interesting when he was talking about brick cards. He specifically mentioned that when he deck builds, he doesn't like to play a deck with too many, uh, with more than one brick because you're gonna draw them too often. Um, during a long event and I do think he's 100% correct in that I'm gonna and later on in the video I'll show you guys some math behind that where the math behind that comes from and in generally like Talk about what bricks are and moving on from there. So ask yourself. What is a brick card? Well a brick card is typically something you some very simply you don't want to draw There's a brick hand and then there's brick cards now. There's two particular kinds of bricks there are what's called a garnet this was typically used to refer to things like gem knight garnet back in the day uh, when brilliant fusion was legal because if you drew gem knight garnet you couldn't use your brilliant fusion to summon seraph knight so that meant that you basically if you drew garnet garnet was a full brick it literally killed in other parts of the engine in your deck so nowadays, obviously, you know, Brilliant Fusion is banned, but Garnet has always kind of been that description. Another kind of brick is a brick card. A good example would be something you don't, you can still combo if you open up the normal pieces you need, but it's not, does the card itself doesn't do anything. It just doesn't entirely um, kill off parts of your deck. A great example of this would be a tuner you would want to summon off of Halka Vibrax. Um, great examples in my Dino Doll deck that I play. Uh, drawing Falco is not the end of the world as long as I have the other combo pieces in my hand um, because I can just summon it out of my hand with uh, um, Halka Vibrax. Uh, same thing would go if I was playing Draco Net, um, but I drew Galaxy Serpent. As long as I had access to Draco Net, no big deal, but obviously that's kind of what I would kind of lightly call a half brick. So that's kind of what we're looking at for brick cards so today what i'm going to show you guys to kind of get some math behind it is a this is called a this is what you can i'll have a link down below to this in the description box so you can check it for yourself it is is it is a you go it's simply a probability calculator you can use this um to kind of calculate you know your chances of drawing certain cards um depending on your deck size it's a really good tool for kind of planning your deck building um so let's just take the example of um if you have a card that's limited, or that's at one, and you're playing a one of brick in a deck for this example, we'll just call it Garnet. Um, we'll just call it Garnet, and we're going to, and we have one in our deck. So that means we have a 12% chance to open that brick card. Now, obviously, as we go up two, it's 22%. So if you play one brick in your deck, it's a one. In, it's about a 12% chance. So give a little bit of leeway. If you're playing, say, 20 m matches over a tournament. You're gonna, you're likely to draw that brick card at least one to two times, um, depending on a little bit of. You're, you're gonna draw it two or anywhere from one to two to three times. And as you go up, for example, if playing two bricks, you have a 22% chance. That means if you're playing 20 uh, matches, you're more than likely going to draw this card, draw that brick card, um, four anywhere from four to six times. And obviously, as you add more bricks, for example, three, you are 30. This means one out of three games, if you're playing three bricks in your deck, you're going to draw it, which means over a long tournament, you're going to draw that card a lot. You're going to draw it anywhere from, you're going to draw one of those brick cards anywhere from six to ten times, and, it, and so on and so forth. So... What this means is you can understand where Patrick Hoban is coming from because he thinks more in terms of playing a really long event, especially if you're you know looking at you know when, you know doing well in YCS for example once you get to top cut. These are things you have to think about when you're deck building. Now obviously now a lot of us are playing either Dragoon or maybe when a Burst of Destiny comes out Phoenix and Forest in our deck, so we are playing brick cards in our deck. So. Um, what ways can you do to kind of help to alleviate that? Now, the obvious easy answer is to try to avoid playing too many bricks in your deck. That's the obvious answer, that's the obvious solution. But in some cases, especially if you're playing things like Dragoon, that's not always an option. So a great option, for example, would be to bump card count up. So let's say I'm playing 44 cards and I am playing, you know, a one, a one of brick. So that's not a, a huge difference, but as you go up in the numbers, it goes, it goes up. From, it it makes a, it can make a sizable difference. This is only with four more cards in your deck that you've gone from a 30% chance down to 28%. Now, 
that's not a significant difference, it seems like, but um, as you go up on the card count, it can make a, it can make a more significant difference. For example, if you're playing 44 cards and you have three bricks in your deck, it's now 27% chance instead of 30. So this isn't a huge difference, but if you have to play some bricks in your deck, this is one of the few ways you can kind of compensate for that. You can bump your card count up. Now, sometimes in some situations you're gonna have, this is one of the things you can do. Obviously you don't, not every deck can do this because um, some decks really need to, some decks lose a lot of consistency the more you bump the card count up. So you have to be playing a kind of specific kind of deck that has a lot of consistency pieces um, to play more cards. But it is a viable option because you are getting that. But this is not going to have the same difference it would that if you were to simply cut brick cards altogether. And this is where Patrick Hoban is coming from. He's coming, he's looking, this is math that's been done over a long tournament. You know, this is especially with, you know, tournaments kicking off again starting in January, this is something, you know, is important to think about as you are moving forward. Um, so, that about comes to the end of the discussion today, guys. Um, I, um, if you guys have any uh, questions, I will be glad to answer them in the comments down, down below. Um, what do you guys think? Is it, um, is it good to play a few bricks in your deck or play none at all? Play a few? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And as always, I thank you guys for watching. Swarstorm, signing out.